the Lincolnshire Fenlands, a stone's throw away from Peterborough, lies the grand ruins of Crowland Abbey. To this day, still a functional Church of England place of worship, what survives of the Abbey provides a key insight into the lives of medieval people in the surrounding fens that cover large swathes of Lincolnshire, Cambridgeshire and Norfolk. The remains we see today are largely from the 12th and 14th century, however the holy site has roots which delve much further back in history. There has been a church at Crowland since at least the 8th century AD, originally a Saxon monastery built by the King of Mercia named Ethelbald. This area of Lincolnshire, however, quickly fell under Nordic rule as the Vikings began taking more and more land along the eastern coast of England during the latter half of the 9th century, eventually arriving at Crowland in around 866 AD, where they burned down the then wooden monastery and slaughtered the local population. Like many grand medieval buildings, the Abbey at Crowland would learn to have a long-standing love-hate relationship with fire, as it was again burnt down in 1091, then, again, less than a century later, in 1170. But, if not anything else, these fires prove testament to the importance that Crowland Abbey had during its heyday as a Benedictine monastery, as it was once again rebuilt, and quickly became one of the most prosperous abbeys in the entire region. It is believed that the location of the abbey is a key to its success. Being hidden within the Fenlands, with many rivers providing excellent travel routes in all directions, Crowland Abbey took advantage of the fruitful countryside around it, being perfect for agriculture and farming wool from sheep, to which was an incredibly rich trade during the High Medieval period. Crowland Abbey surely learned from its sibling churches in East Anglia, notably Castle Acre Priory, Binham Priory and St Bennet's Abbey. Since just as the wool trade proved vital to their success, this was also true to that of Crowland Abbey. The sheer amount of profit that this Benedictine monastery enjoyed is clear in its construction, as the ruinous remains feature an incredible West End which serves as a beautiful early example of English Gothic architecture, which became all the rage in medieval Britain by the 13th century. Not to mention the stunning statuettes which remain in place standing on plinths built into recesses on the West End Wall and Entrance Arch. The sheer fact that these survived during the dissolution of the monasteries and the Reformation confirms that Crowland must have remained a highly respected and revered site amongst its local community for century upon century. Other than its isolated location and the usefulness of the surrounding landscape, Crowland had another trick up its sleeve namely the Shrine of St Guflach, an ancient Saxon saint. This feature led to many visits by generations of kings, queens and noblemen throughout the Middle Ages, which only aided to Crowland's prosperity, quickly becoming one of the most opulent abbeys in the country. As you walk through the streets that would have once led you to Crowland's medieval marketplace, you can't help but notice a rather peculiar monument standing proud in the market square, this is the surviving remainder of an incredibly rare example of medieval architecture, a freeway bridge. What we see today is a 14th century bridge, however a wooden bridge, or multiple bridges, would have been at this site for over a thousand years. This is due to two of the previously mentioned rivers snaking through the countryside of Crowland. The rivers have since dried up and were covered over during the Victorian age, but this stunning medieval bridge survives today as a wonderfully rare example of medieval technology and capability, being the only one of its kind surviving in Britain. As for the abbey's fate, it of course fell foul at the hands of the dissolution of the monasteries in the mid-16th century, and while the nave continued to be used as a place of worship under the new ownership of the Church of England, the surrounding monastic buildings were left to ruin, and largely used as building material in the local area. Stone was not locally available in much of the Fenlands, so the abbey buildings were highly sought after to use for new construction projects in and around Crowland. Indeed, the foundations we see today make up only half of the abbey's original blueprint. Interestingly, the abbey grounds were fortified by the royalists during the English Civil War, and were used as a defensive position. But, luckily Crowland did not see much conflict during the Civil War, as if it had, the remaining parts of the Abbey likely wouldn't have survived past the 17th century. 
One particularly intriguing note to end on, although not entirely agreed upon as confirmed fact, is that Crowland perhaps may be the first ever church in England to feature church bells, which would have been heard wide across the Fenlands. But for now, thanks for watching.